call me Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Batman. What up? Welcome back. It is Bones. And in this one, let's go ahead and add one more figure to my McFarlane DC Multiverse collection. Now, today we will take a look at the first appearance of Batman. Of course, this is a version of the Cape Crusader from Detective Comics number 27 in his original form. Now, this is one of my favorite versions of Batman only because <laughs> he was really brutal and like a no-nonsense vigilante champion of vengeance. And he kind of got away from that in the later years, in the later eras. But originally, he was <laughs> a pretty vicious killer. <laughs> and a lot of people like to forget that. Down in his core, Batman will never get away from with his violent side. Now, very interesting figure. I did end up picking this one up in the bundle from McFarlane's toy store. So he basically cost me around $20. And for $20, the figure you're getting here is really spectacular. Now, he does look pretty tragic in the packaging. But let's go ahead and take a closer look at him. But first, he does come with your standard black DC Multiverse stamp. Now, of course, these are not really needed, but sometimes they do come in useful. He also comes with his data fall card. On the front, you do have... A little historic comic artwork, the cover of Detective Comics 27, Batman's first appearance. And that's a big thing that regular, ordinary people don't know is this is how Batman originally was conceived with those pinkish, purplish gloves, the really long pointy ears, and a very simplified capsule utility belt. And a little bit of a vicious streak that he had in him. <laughs> really cold-blooded. Always one of my favorite versions of The Dark Knight. On the back, you do have some information. Pretty sweet. We'll hold on to that. Now, he does come with some accessories. He comes with these alternate palm hands. Now, the way I look at these is back in the day... They use a lot of like judo and martial arts, especially in the old comics. And you could use these to put him in a karate stance or anything like that. Just showing him ready to take on some thugs. But besides that, they're not really useful for anything else. Now, once again, the man stranglers make an appearance here. <laughs> these are turning out to be some of McFarlane's most used hands and they kind of are a gesturing hand, but to me, they just look like you want to, you know, strangulate somebody. But these are a lot more useful than these palm hands. And then, of course, you have the wrench. Now, at first, I thought this was because he probably beat a criminal to death with a wrench. But come to find out, he uses it to break glass in the comics. And a lot of people were perplexed about which hands you could use to hold these. Of course, he originally comes with two fists, which is how I prefer my action figures. But you can't include a wrench like this and not <laughs> be able to hold him. So, of course, I went ahead and figured out how to fix that. We'll take a look at that later on in the video. But pretty nice little accessory, quirky, you know, obscure little accessory that McFarlane gave us. Now, let's go ahead and take a closer look at this guy. Really nice figure. As you all know, my favorite Batman so far from McFarlane is the Blue Hush Batman. Love that figure. Could pose him all day. Still find myself going back to him. And I actually prefer the taller Batman compared to the little shorties like Nightfall Batman. And of course the Rebirth Batman, which are all for me too short to scale with the rest of the line but the good thing is that you can use alternate height versions of batman with different setups and different displays so you're not you know pigeonholed into one batman you can open up your options and decide which batman you want to use but 
He looks really good. I love the aesthetics of this body. Sort of a hulking Batman. Now, it doesn't quite fit really <laughs> with the first appearance of Batman because, you know, back then the characters were more slender and not so muscular. But it does fit in totality if you want to display him on his own as a first appearance Batman. I can see somebody getting, you know, a larger version of this Detective Comics cover, having it on the shelf and then having this guy, you know, displayed in a pose. That would be awesome in anybody's office. So really cool figure. Looks good. Love the color. Sort of an off bluish gray. You got the purple gloves. You got the really bright utility belt. All coming together to make a beautiful looking figure. Now, of course, this isn't perfect. There are some things that I didn't like. And of course, I will be getting into those. But for first impressions, great figure. Now, I won't get... Too much into articulation because, of course, we've seen this body before. This is the three Jokers body, also the Hush body. But we'll take a quick look just to assess the figure. Of course, you got that really nice waist articulation. Smooth, giving him a lot of range. He does have a slight crunch. Now, of course, you could mod these figures to get even more of a crunch. And it's, it's really not as hard as I thought it was. I've been starting to modify a lot of my figures, giving them the ab crunch, and I found that it's a really quick process. Once you pop them apart, it does. It takes you a matter of minutes to add a lot more range at the abdominal crunch. Of course, you got the shoulder articulation, the same articulation you expect from McFarlane figures. And that brings us into the head sculpt. Now, taking a closer look at the head sculpt, really surprised at how much i enjoyed this head sculpt it even opened me up to putting it on alternate bodies to see how it would look but we'll take a look at that later but really captures that gritty first appearance of batman and surprisingly it's it's kind of a quintessential batman when you look at it he got some pointy cow he got the long ears the only thing that brings this head sculpt down i would have to say is the articulation and once again, McFarlane has gone with that head plug. Now, I cannot say enough how I wish they would just make the head plug and then separate the head. That way you would have, you know, ultimate articulation. But they go with this sort of stiff one joint neck and head sculpt, and it really reduces the range of movement. As you can see, he can look down really well. So putting him up and having him look down into the city works awesome. But the problem will be when you want to make him look up. You're just not going to get a lot of movement out of there. Plus, it starts gapping here in the neck, which is one thing that I'm not a fan of. Now, you do get right to left, respectively and smoothly. And, of course, you can still tilt his head for some attitude. But I really am disappointed in the full range of motion of this headpiece. It's fine. I could deal with it. Still a great figure, but that's just something that I, I, I'm not a fan of. In total, it is a great looking head sculpt with some reduced articulation. So taking a look at him, the same articulation we've seen in the legs. I mean, great figure has a lot. You know, I think people have this stigma that <laughs> McFarlane can articulate. The figures are like statues, and that is the furthest thing from the truth. You can get some great poses with these guys, soften them up, heat them up, and move them around. And the more you move them around, the looser they get, and you can really get them into some acrobatic poses if that's what you want to do. But even down and through the back, it's the same thing. Great body sculpt. But now we move into this cape. Now, I, I wanted to talk about the cape because... This is like the second or third wired cape that I have come across with McFarlane. And there was always this thing about plastic cape versus cloth cape. And the thing I never thought about was wired capes because this is a big game changer. And the reason I say that is because when you have a plastic cape, like let's say here with steel, it's, it's static, right? It's not going to move. It's in its own form, but if it's sculpted in a way, you can pose it 
and get a little bit of action out of it, a little bit of, you know, life. But a cloth cape, especially the older ones, they just hang and there's really no way to get any movement or dynamic, you know, action out of them. So that's why I was never a big fan of cloth capes. But now with the added wire, you really could articulate the cape and get it into so many poses that this is by far <laughs> going to be my favorite choice of cape with the wire. I still have an affinity for the dramatically sculpted capes because you can pose the figure and use those capes, you know, to your advantage. But there is just unlimited movement and flow that you can get from a wired cape, even as far as, you know, opening it up all the way and getting that, you know, flaring posability from the cape. It's just awesome. Really great material, really nice and supple wire. Oh, it, really a game changer, as I said before. Nobody is giving you a wired, textured cape for a $20 figure. Only McFarlane is doing that, and that's just crazy. So pretty happy with them. Great figure. Now, one thing I did want to do is I wanted to get some alternate hands. Now, of course, the first thing I wanted to do was get a gripping hand. And this was fairly simple because I just took one of the gripping hands from one of my extra hush Batman. I mean, I bought five of those, so I have enough alternate hands floating around. And it is a glove textured gripping hand for the right hand. You just pop that in, and now he is able <laughs> to hold the wrench. So that was a simple fix. The only part was having to match the paint. I matched it pretty well. I could go a little lighter, but you can't even tell on camera they match up almost the same. Great little quick alternate hand to give him, you know, the ability to grip that wrench and you know, <laughs> use it to, his, uh, to its destructive potential. So that's pretty hilarious. But yeah, easy to make that hand. It was the gripping hand from a Hush Batman. And I just painted it to match the color. Now, the other thing is what I really wanted the, <laughs> the gripping hand for was a trigger hand because, of course, the old school Batman did carry around a pistol. And I would have to say that this is probably the last thing a lot of criminals and thugs would see back in the day was <laughs> Batman coming at him with a pistol and it was lights out. Pretty cool. You could get him in some cool poses with the gun. And it's a lot of fun to have this little accessory, little added deviousness. I did also make an alternate like flat gesturing hand and ah, I had to paint this one as well, but it does give him a little bit of extra attitude and ability to pose and give off some emotion. And this was just one I threw in. I didn't really plan on making this one, but I thought it fit really well. And since I already had the paint mixed together, I went ahead and made him this you know, open flaring hand, which really looks cool. So all in all, a great little quick custom hands that I made for him. Now, of course, did want to go ahead and try some alternate looks for this guy. And of course, you do know I own the old Mattel version, which of course has <laughs> has a little pistol as well. But you cannot compare this, you know, 10 points of articulation against this 22 points of articulation. Beautifully designed, beautifully sculpted figure, wired, adjustable cape to whatever shape you want. I mean, this is cool. I've had it for a long time, but there's just no comparison between old Mattel and new McFarlane. Just blows it out of the water. Now, as far as like comparison figures, there's only one figure that I've been holding on to that I want to put next to this Batman. And of course, that is going to be my Earth 2 Superman, but with the first appearance Superman head. Both of these guys have cloth capes. Both of these guys are tall in stature. They just fit perfectly like they were made for each other. This is truly 
the world's finest, the original version. Probably going to end up displaying these two guys together. They're just like, you know, <laughs> meant to be together. Two awesome first appearance releases from McFarlane. You have your Superman and your classic Batman. So really a great figure to add to your collection. In fact, I have a couple of these coming from other, you know, online stores. So I'm still holding off on those. This is the one I received from McFarlane, but I have some coming from Best Buy. So I'll be really anticipated to see if I get the platinum version, which was another sort of cell shaded blue version, which it's not a big deal. Eventually I will pick them up. The other day, in fact, at, at Walmart, I came across the platinum Aquaman and the platinum John Stewart. So I never had to pay scalper prices. I never, you know, got all crazy. I just waited. And eventually you'll, you'll be able to get those platinums for a reasonable price. So great figure. Happy to finally take a look at him. Happy to add him to my McFarlane collection. But anyways, you guys keep hunting out there. Keep collecting. Keep customizing. And I will see you on the next one. Crazy Joe, but now they can call me Fat Man. Up and having them look down into the city works awesome, mm -hmm. but the problem will be when you want.